you already watched a narrated PowerPoint that talked about electrons and orbitals and introduced the idea of placing electrons into shells as a simpler version of explaining how the electrons move around the atomic nucleus and whether or not an atom might undergo a reaction and form a bond. You are going to be responsible for your homework and for an upcoming exam for being able to draw electron shells. So I wanted to give you a little demo right now. Remember that the first shell holds two electrons. The second shell has eight electrons. Um, otherwise, you could say four orbitals of the same energy level. And then the third shell also has eight electrons. Um, we said that there's really 18 electrons in that third shell, but there's only eight that participate in reactions. So we're just going to draw eight in the third shell. Let's start with an example, and we're going to do an example of nitrogen. Erase this too. Okay, so our first example is going to be nitrogen. So you can look at your periodic table and you know that nitrogen has seven protons and to have an atom, we have the same number of protons as electrons. So nitrogen has seven protons and seven electrons and we're gonna put those electrons into the shells. We always start at the lowest energy and we move our way up filling the shells until we have no electrons left. So typically, I like to put the symbol in the middle, in the atomic nucleus, and then I'm going to draw my first shell, which holds two electrons, and then I still have five more electrons, so I'm going to put those in the second shell. Notice when I'm drawing the electrons, I am placing them as far away as possible from one another to indicate that the electrons all have the same charge and are repelled by each other. They want to stay as far away from each other as possible. So nitrogen, I'll make these a little bit bigger, has two electrons in the first shell and five electrons in the second shell. So it doesn't have a full outer shell, um, and that's one of the reasons why nitrogen will undergo reactions. Um, atoms are most stable when they have a full outer shell. Let's go through another example. Um, we're going to do aluminum this time. And again, you can figure out how many electrons aluminum has based on the atomic number that you can find off of your periodic table. And if you look on your table, aluminum has 13 protons and therefore 13 electrons. We're going to start the exact same way. Make my symbol and I draw my first shell. This is not going to change. I'm going to put two electrons in my first shell and then I'm going to draw my second shell and I'm going to continue. There's electrons three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. But aluminum has 13 electrons, so I have to draw one more shell. Here's my third shell for aluminum. And I'm going to put three electrons in that third shell. And this would be a complete shell model for aluminum. Similar to nitrogen, aluminum does not have a full outer shell and it can undergo reactions with other atoms. For this class, I will not ask you to draw any shell models for um, atoms that go past the third shell, so you will not have to put do anything past um, 18 electrons going into the shell model. Good luck on your homework.